Now, there's a lot of talk these, uh, these days, friends, about the Middle East, and especially about Iraq. Uh, Iraq has been in the news uh, much more so perhaps than any other country in the Middle East. It's uh, a cause of great concern, has been for a number of years now and will continue to be, especially uh, for Christians around the world who are concerned about the, uh, the state of the relationship between Muslims and Christians in Iraq. Uh, the reports that we've received about uh, the bombings of churches and the persecution of Christians is very disturbing. Well, what most people don't know is that right in the middle of all of this is a remarkable man by the name of Canon Andrew White. He is the vicar of St. George's Church in Baghdad. He's sometimes called the vicar of Baghdad. And he is right in the middle of all of this and having a profound impact both in Iraq and also internationally. And we have been able to Skype uh, Canon White and I'm delighted to introduce him to you. Welcome to the program, uh, Canon White. Good afternoon, good morning, or whatever it is there. Yeah, well, it's afternoon for you, morning for us. Now, Ken and White, uh, we, first of all, what is the state of the uh, relationship between Muslims and Christians in Iraq today? It's very important to notice that the relationship between the Muslims and Christians has very little, if anything, to do with violence that we have been experiencing, which is very severe. And so relationships with the Muslims is second to none. You know, next week I'm taking all the key religious Iraqi leaders to Copenhagen to meet to discuss this issue of the persecution and the murder of the Christians. But the attacks are coming predominantly from the al-Qaeda connected people who are not even from Iraq. Now how do, how do the average Iraqi Muslims feel uh, in their hearts about al-Qaeda? Well it's very important that we consider what Muslims because there are the two major groups here, Shia and Sunni. And the Shia are all against Al-Qaeda. Some of the Sunni are very positive about Al-Qaeda. And the problem is, here in Iraq, you learn that you cannot, you cannot buy people, you can only hire them. And some of the Sunni leaders came over from Al-Qaeda to um, the American approach under the Sons of Iraq program, but now it has got considerably worse, and several of them have gone back to Al-Qaeda, and I mean several hundred. Now, uh, Ken and White, this is controversial, but I must ask you this. There have been uh, television reports out of Iraq uh, interviewing uh, Iraqi Christians who are undergoing severe persecution, who say that before the Americans came, things were much better for them. Is this, is this true? Well, absolutely. Things were much better for everybody. But I still think the Americans had to come. But you can't leave very quickly. When you try and do something, believe me, we the British know well about taking over other countries. We did it to you, didn't we? <laughs> I think you did. You can't run away very quickly that there was very bad long-term planning as to what would happen to the majority of people whose life had been totally changed. The previous regime was extremely evil. But Saddam was a minority, and the Christians are minorities. And so he protected them to a certain extent. Uh, Ken and White. Now there's no protection. No protection. Um, with no protection, uh, is it an amazement to you? It certainly is to us that your congregation has grown the way it is. The last report I read, you have about 4,000 and counting people risking their lives, really, to come to worship the Lord under your leadership. Uh, why that number of people? Does that surprise you? 
Well, it does surprise me, actually, because most of the churches here are almost empty. <clears throat> the reason we have so many people and the reason they come is because they are loved and provided for. And this is the most important thing that we can do, is to love people and provide for them. In addition to the church, we have the largest clinic in Baghdad. We see over 100 patients a day, both medical and dental. We have a laboratory, we have a pharmacy, we have a school, and we provide everybody with groceries every week. Now, just uh, quickly, tell me about this Copenhagen conference. Uh, you are the man who has really championed this. You've catalyzed it. You have brought together the uh, significant religious leaders of Iraq, and you're bringing them to Copenhagen for this conference to talk about peace. Uh, a lot of these men have strong antipathies to one another, I'm sure. Uh, what are your hopes for success? Well. It's very important to notice, note that we have been working together for several years. This group has become known as the High Council of Religious Leaders in Iraq and is Sunni and Shia, but there will also be Christians there. And yes, they knew about each other, but they had not met each other. And over the years that we have been working together, they have not just become colleagues, they have become real friends. And so we're not bringing together a group of strangers, we're bringing together a group of friends. Canon Andrew White, Vicar of St. George's Church, also known popularly as Vicar of Baghdad. It's been a delight talking to you, and you need to know that believers all across Canada will be praying for the success of your conference, and certainly for your personal success and for your safety. May the Lord richly bless you. Thank you for coming our way. Thank you very much indeed. And I think it's really appro appropriate, friends, that we follow through even now and just uh, pray for this man and this conference. Uh, as I've been reading up about this, uh, I realize that it's not uh, just one perspective. People around the world are looking on this conference as potentially uh, world-changing. If indeed these uh, key religious leaders can agree to work together and to pursue peace, it will transcend anything that's being done on the political front. You can, you can count on it. And so it's really essentially uh, an issue of the heart, uh, of the soul, and uh, as uh, Canon White leads it, uh, as a uh, dearly beloved uh, vicar in Baghdad, as someone who loves the Lord with all of his heart, we just uh, want this thing to succeed. So let's just pray together. Father, we pray together. We thank you for uh, a man such as this. Uh, you call individuals to very individual ministries. And Lord, you know about this man. You have placed him there. And now he is championing this, this, um, this, this conference. We ask, O oh Lord, that your Holy Spirit will be present there and will do a work that is beyond anybody's imagination. We just uh, want to cover this event in prayer. And we just invite you, O oh Holy Spirit, to do your good work in him and in all of those who attend to your greater good and to the glory of God. And we bless your name. Amen. Continue to pray for this conference and for this man. We, I, I want to have him back on again. What a, a remarkable fellow. And you, you might not know this, friends, but um, he suffers from multiple sclerosis. Uh, and so everything he does, you know, is uh, more of a challenge than it would be for those who are able-bodied. And in spite of his disability, he is just going for it. And as you can see, God is singularly blessing his life and his ministry. That's Canon Andrew White, Vicar of St. George's, Baghdad.